Hi, Mary Meat. So, I wanted to make a video about correspondences and how it is quite okay to be imperfect in magic. Now, I see a quite a few occultists who get completely crippled by the idea that I have to be perfect. By this, I mean that their magic has to be done on the right astrological time, in the right place, using the right ingredients, chanting the right chant, and so on and so on. A long list which makes it very, very difficult to get anything done. I remember talking with my teacher about this once, and I got one of the best advice I've ever gotten. That is, do the best you can, but don't worry about being perfect. Not word for word, but he has told me not to uh, reveal exactly what he tells me, so I won't, even if I don't have any contact with him anymore. I think that's important as a cultist to respect those who teach us, including their wishes. So yeah, but th the concept is the same. Basically, don't worry about being perfect. Worry about make, making it as good as it can. Now, let's say you want to do a spell to attract a lover. A popular magical endeavor. So you decide to make a gel candle to Aphrodite that you can light once a day and then for a certain number of days while uh, thinking about the qualities you want in a man or a woman. Yeah, so then of course the correspondences in play here is that you want to fill the bottom of that candle with uh, little stones from the beach and you want to add shells and the like and some corresponding herbs. You want the gel to be pink or green because that uh, corresponds with the heart chakra and of course love and you want little glass hearts in there and you want to construct all of this on a friday on a rising moon at six o'clock just to say some correspondences yeah then you run into the first problem you live far away from the beach and you can't seem to find any any uh, beach stones what do you do let's say go get some pebbles at a flower shop because they use a lot of pebbles to uh, I'm not completely sure what they do with, it, with the plants because I have no idea how to take care of plants but yeah they, they sell them at flower shops I think they use it so that uh, the dirt won't get too uh, wet anyway you get the pebbles there then you say oh I, I don't have any shells what do I do I really should be picking these shells myself off the beach. Yeah, try a hobby shop, they often have shells. It might be more powerful if you pick the shells yourself, but really, if you can't do that because you live far away from the beach, it's better that you actually get the magic done. So you buy it there. And then you find out that I have to work on uh, Fridays, I can't do the spell then and uh, if I wait I will um, uh, uh, lose the increasing moon and have to wait for a month for that to get back and then I say do it on Saturday you're catching my drift here basically try to get things as close to perfect as possible but you don't have to it doesn't have to actually be perfect and it's like if I have a headache and I want to do a healing ritual for that I'm not gonna sit and wait until the moon and the date and the time of day is completely perfect I'm going to light a blue candle say a quick chant uh, to the god and the goddess or the energy or whatever I feel like right then to help take away my headache and that's it so yeah correspondences are there to help you not shackle you 
basically, I think that a lot of this is because it's a misunderstanding of what the correspondences does. The correspondences isn't an uh, end of thing that if you don't have them correct, your magic won't work. Correspondences help to add energy to your spell. Now, I know that I'm talking within the energy model here, and you have to excuse me for that. It's just the easiest model to explain this in. Basically, and the explanation I'm going to add now is by no means complete, and it is an oversimplification, but bear with me. So, this is a glass of water. Imagine that if your spell is going to go off and be successful, it has to have this much energy. It has to reach this point. Now, the energy you manage to raise yourself, using various forms to attract the energy and so on, might get you here. And then you need something to fill the difference. Now, correspondences add energy. Like, if you see the shape of a heart, you know that typical heart shape, you think of love. And that connection to love that it has adds energy. And yeah, adding the correct astrological times that add energy. All the correspondences you add into it add energy. So eventually then it will get to the point where the spell will go off and be successful. And another thing that it does is that it adds focus. Again, let's look at this glass of water. Let's say you have to have a focus here. And by focus I mean the address, sort of, for the spell. You have to tell this energy what to do. Now a lot of this is done by your direct Declaring your intent. I'm doing this spell to attract a mate. And depending on how much you manage to focus, you might get your focus up to here. But then by adding symbols that correspond to love, you increase that. So basically that's what correspondences does. Excuse me. Cheers. Correspondences add energy and focus to your magic but for example a lot of people that's been doing this for a long time can raise enough energy just of themselves they don't need the correspondences correspondences are tools they aren't something that you should be bound down by and also since correspondences sort of stack up if you can't make one correspondence work because of timing because you just don't have that correspondence and so on then add something else. This is why actually having a good book of correspondences can be very useful. Because let's say you want to do that ritual but you can't find seashells. So you find something else, perhaps a herb, perhaps some crystals. Like for example, we want to you want to have a sea connection because of Aphrodite. So you find hmm, a cromarin. That's a stone that's associated with the sea. We add a few of those in here, because we couldn't find seashells, and that will do the same good. Basically, uh, correspondences are ways to add energy so that we ourselves don't have to carry all the power needed to make a spell work. And also, correspondences helps us focus, because really, that is one of the key uh, things about magic. I can just sit here and blubber out a uh, 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 chant all I want. And perhaps it will have some effect because the words has been used many times, they are associated with certain energies, and my intent that I'll do magic will have a certain power in and of itself. But if I'm really going to be effective, I have to be able to keep a focus on what I want with it. So let's say I want to do a protective chant. I can just chant it out and do the visualizations, but if my mind is on mm, cutlets with a good Bernays sauce mm, 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 that I want for dinner, then 
the effectiveness of that spell will be very limited, but if I also manage to keep my mind on the idea of attracting protection, it will be a lot more powerful. And correspondences helps to add that focus. And also, especially if you are like me and have a tendency to, that your focus slips, correspondences can help to keep the energy focus, even when you are not. That's why correspondences is very useful. And I've seen that a lot of occultists go uh, for an either or here. Either they correspondence heaven, they go completely nuts. And if some correspondence doesn't work out, they are convinced that magic just can't work. So they just sit around, ah, but I really needed to do a healing ritual before my sick friend. But unfortunately the moon is on its way down and I don't have the correct herbs and so on. It's like, I can't do it. I'm completely shackled by this. I just won't work. And to that I say complete bullshit. Okay, the moon is on the way down. Work with it. First of all, you don't necessarily have to incorporate the moon's phases. If you want to, instead of attracting health to your friend, banish illness. You don't have the correct herbs? Okay, uh, use stones. You don't have the correct stones? Do colors. There are so many correspondences, you can always find something you have. It's a little bit like, like cooking. So, uh, I was at a, a support group for people with Asperger's, and we were making uh, some sort of Mexican food. And we decided, okay, we need such and such vegetable. Well, we don't have it. What do we have in the fridge? Oh, yes. Um, cucumber. That will work as a replacement. Basically, take what you have and work with that. Now, if I want to do a very important spell, I might try to get as many correspondences as possible in there. But it doesn't mean that if you don't have all those correspondences, or if all those correspondences are impossible to do for you, that you should be shackled down by it. Now the other point of that equation is those that say, correspondences? What a load of bull! I'm just not going to do correspondences at all. And I think that, to those I say, you are missing out on a very important and very powerful tool. Because correspondences can add a lot of focus and energy to your magic. So, yeah, that's basically my point here, that... Correspondences is very useful. And they are a great tool, if you view them as tools. Very, if you view them as... It's, if I don't have the right correspondences, I can't do magic, then they become shackled. And that's not good. Basically, you can do magic at any time. You can do any kind of magic that you desire at any point of time. It doesn't matter what the stars say, it doesn't matter what the moon say, it doesn't matter what day of the week it is. If you want to do a healing ritual for your plant, do a healing ritual for your plant. If you do want to do a ritual to better your relationship with your mother, you can do that. The magic is in you. However, what correspondences can do is help you achieve your goals. And sometimes going by them will make your spells more effective. So that... Let's say I want to do a ritual to um, help me focus on my studies. I want to this ritual to banish distractions and help me just keep my mind on the ta uh, target. So I decide that the co best corresponding color for this is yellow. So I take a yellow candle. I um, uh, carved uh, Scott Cunningham's focus rune into it, so correspondence there, and I surround the candle with lemon quartz, which is a stone that stands very much for the idea of focus and 
basically keeping your eye on the target. Now here I'm using three correspondences. I'm using the color yellow, I'm using the stone lemon quartz, and I am using that focus rune. Now I can do this magic with nothing. I can sit, I can close my eyes, I can draw in energy, and I can just send that energy out towards that goal. And that will be effective. But by doing this, adding these correspondences, I add focus and I add energy. So that I don't have to carry all of it myself. Basically, the more energy you can get into a spell, the better it will work. Therefore, you use correspondences as a way to get more energy into it. But I don't have to. And of course, since then I want to attract focus, the best time to do it will probably be when the moon is rising. And if I want to do it more like banishing distractions, it's better to do it when the moon is on its way down. But if I don't want to follow the moon's faces there, my magic will still be effective. It's just one more thing that I can add to make it more effective. Now, another thing that's very useful with correspondences is that if you're doing group work, because really one of the major difficulties with group work is getting everybody on the same page. And then correspondences can help that because there are archetypes associated with a lot of symbols. So that if your if your coven is doing weather magic to try to get the weather to be nice for that pagan festival next Tuesday, focusing on weather symbols and symbols for sun and associated with the sun and good weather. Like, let's say everybody then focus on tarot card the sun. That will help keep everybody on the same page. So yeah, seems I've been rambling uh, on quite enough. So let me just finish by just saying my point one more time. Correspondences are great. Correspondences are great tools. They can add a lot of energy to your spells and make it more easy for those spells to work. The correspondences are not chuckles. You don't need to follow them and you don't need to follow all of them. Basically, like with everything else, do it as good as you can. If I'm going to make a lasagna and I discover I don't have that uh, good stored cheese that I really like for it to give it that mm, uh, a sting of a taste, I'll use just normal everyday cheese because I'm not gonna not make my dinner because I don't have this one ingredient and it is the same with correspondences you can't uh, you don't have the time to wait for the correct moon phase do the spell now and yes perhaps add another correspondence to make up for the energy that uh, gets lost with the moon phase not being right basically use correspondences as tools and not shackles and they are great so yeah, that is what I wanted to say. I hope you have enjoyed this video and blessed be.